Good morning, church. How's everybody doing today? Isn't it good to be in the presence of God this morning? Amen. Well, my name is Daryl. I come from Auburn, Washington. And I come from a church called Overcomer Covenant Church. And I have the honor and privilege of helping lead the men's ministry there. Yeah. And part of our men's ministry is an event that we call The Return. The return is not a retreat. It is an encounter. Men don't retreat, we advance. Amen. Amen. So if I could have the 12 men that went through the event come join me at the front. Come on, give it up. Give it up for these men. Come on. These 12 men went and encountered God this weekend. They, they went one way, and they returned a free man. Amen. And I want my friend, Pastor Stewart and Nicholas, to come share a little bit about their, their experience at the return. Come Praise the Lord. It is good to be home. I gave God the glory for the encounter He gave us this week. Let us give a mighty hand clap to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for my Muse. Musumba Kasozi. Pastor Robert. Pastor Andrew. Pastor Andrew. The team from the US. The team who from the US. And the team also from Uganda. The team who from Uganda. For the opportunity given to us to encounter God in another dimension. When I went to the return, I had many questions. Because as a pastor, you move on program. But I was challenged by the Holy Spirit. But this time around, it was his program, not my program. This return encounter reminded me the day I gave my life to Christ. Every moment was so special. And I came to know God this time around as a father, as a daddy, as a papa, as a very present hope in every minute when I need him. And my identity is in him. Sometimes I've been serving with an orphan spirit like a slave because of the things I went through as a young man. Because my earthly father was not there. And sometimes I could feel bad that he didn't do so much about me. But through this account, I came to understand that my father didn't have much to offer to me because he didn't have it. But I've come to know we have a God. We have a God who has everything for us. And as I stand before you today, I am a free man. I am an overcomer. I have learned to forgive my brothers. I have come to forgive my sisters. I have learned to love my wife more than any other time. I am free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we went away this weekend, I thought I had it all. I thought I had everything in check. But going away for these last couple of days, I was able to discover that I've been walking in bondage. There are things that have followed me from generations, way, way, way back. 
But this weekend, God held me and started unpacking me. Piece by piece. Piece by piece. I got to a point I didn't know who I was. I just want to thank God that we have a father who cares about every single detail of my life. I can stand here today before you and say without any shadow of doubt I am a free man. I just want to thank first and foremost God who now I understand is my father. I thank God for these men who traveled all the way from Washington State. Our pastors here, Bishop Kasozi, Bishop Kasozi and the, the entire team. I also thank God so much for these 12 men who God has used to understand who I am. I am a free man. My prayer is every man in this place will get a chance to go through this experience. Because as men, we've been called to lead and change this world. As better husbands, as better fathers, as better men of God, and to lead by example. Praise the Lord! Glory to God. Amen. I want to share with you that the, the return, come here, Bishop. The re Bishop went to the return in Washington in January of 2021. And there was about 10 inches of snow on the ground. So if the Lord can reach Bishop <laughs> in the freezing cold, then the Lord can reach you too. Amen. 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 This has been three years in the making, Bishop. Mm -hmm. And now we have, what is it, uh, 33 men. 33 men that have gone through the return. 20, 23 men. 23 men. 23 men. And next week we'll add 12 more. Yeah. These men are going to change the nation of Uganda. Amen. For the glory of God. Amen. 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 At the return, we learn a war cry that we're going to introduce to you today. A war cry. So on the count of three, these 12 and the alumni in the crowd, you guys know what to do. Yeah. One, two, three. Amen.
Hallelujah. Tulibana bakatonda. Era twazze mu kubera wokwe okumusinza. Hallelujah. Amen. Osolo kuimusako ku mikono jono omusinza. Mu bigambo byo. Olo bulunchi bwe. Olo kwagala kwe. Olo kutununula. Asani de Yesu. Jesus, we come to worship you.
from eternity to eternity from age to age you're the same worthy of worship worthy of praise worthy to be exalted who is there like you my king who is there like you Adonai Elohim El Shaddai Shama Sipenu Jehovah our healer, Jehovah, Jehovah our banner, Jehovah, Jehovah our helper, Jehovah, we Jehovah our strength, Jehovah, our ever present help in trouble, we our we strong and mighty tower. Who is there like you? We stand in your presence. Where the king? Where the king? Where the king? Who is like you? There is no one. 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 No one is like you. Where they to be exalted? Where they to be exalted? We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. You deserve the glory. The honor. The praises. King of kings, we stand in your presence. Just to worship you. Just to exalt your name just to glorify because who is king except you Yahweh there is no one no one no one you alone are the king you alone are the king and this afternoon we bless your name for your name is surely worthy of worship Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and give the Lord a worship offering. Give a worship offering. Give him a worship offering. With your hand claps. Give him a worship offering. An offering. That is deserving of a king. And offering deserving of a king. Come on, 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 come on. Yes. 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 Worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. As we come to the table of the Lord. We're going to read from Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. We begin to read from verse 14. 
Genesis 14, 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them to Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And when he had brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lord and his goods, and the women also, and the people, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kadolomar and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the most high. Possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him tithes of all. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells us that Jesus is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Which means that this is not just a shadow of things to come. It means that this is one of the moments that Jesus, Yeshua, entered before it was his time and did things on earth. Because Yeshua is the king of Salem. Because Yeshua is the king of Salem. The Bible says Abraham had wrought a great victory against five kings. And on his return, all the kings that had gone, whom he had helped to recover theirs, they were in awe of the kind of God that Abraham served. But Melchizedek, at that point of victory, brings forth bread and wine. It is also the first type of Holy Communion that we see in the Bible. There's great victory in our God. So as we come to the table of the Lord this morning or afternoon, please understand that our God desires to give us victory. Even those who are on the online church, if you can get something and you join us in communion, it would be a blessing to you. The Bible calls him the bread of life. He is the bread of life. As we partake of communion this morning, may we receive life. He was broken for our iniquities. May the iniquities in your life be reduced to nothingness as we take communion this morning. May the Lord work a work in our lives this morning. There are not many things that the Lord instructed us to do in remembrance of him. But this is one of them. As we come to the table of the Lord this morning, partake of victory. Maybe for you, victory is healing of the body. Maybe victory is healing from confusion. I hear the Lord tell me there are people with blood diseases. I don't know why that's the phrase that I'm hearing, blood diseases. But as we come to communion table this morning, may you meet the king of, of, of Salem.
Kabakawasale mo omusinkane. May he bring shalom into your life. Alete shalom mumbula mo bwencha yalero. May there be increase in your life. Le kabera wakwe yongera mumbula mo bwamwe. The Bible says that he took the cup after he had broken the bread. Bible egamba na kuata chikompe ngamazo kumenya mo mugati. Took the cup. And he said that this is the cup of the New Testament. And part of the tenets of the New Testament is that every promise of God in Yeshua is here and amen. I don't know what promise it is that God has given you. But as you partake of the communion cup this week, this morning or afternoon. Receive year and a man in your life. In Jesus' name. I can see people are still partaking. Receive We remember your promise that your body was broken for us. That by your stripes we were healed. And that our iniquities were carried upon you. We receive healing this morning. From bodily ailments. And from iniquities. In Jesus name. Let's partake of the body of Christ together. Let's also partake of the cup of the New Testament together. the ashes to bring the offertory baskets out. Let's bring the offertory baskets out so that we can bring our offerings. Let's bring the tithe basket here. I want to encourage our ushers to be vigilant. When, when we say we're doing something, we do it quickly. Um, we do have a basket here. And this is offertory for our construction. I encourage you to put in something every Sunday you come. On the wings, we do have the offertory baskets. And right here in the middle is the one for the tithe. So as we come to bring in, let's understand that. So let's bring our offertory and tithe as we continue to worship together. May it be a pleasing sacrifice to him. And may he bless your giver. In Jesus' name, let's bring our offerings, our tithes.
to invite Bishop Kasozi to come back again. Amen. Praise the Lord Church. Amen. Let's welcome um, Pastor David. Pastor David is a friend to this church. It's no introduction. It's great to be back in Uganda. I love, I love to see how God is moving in this country. And how, and how you're being used to change the nation. Before you sit down, I want to introduce some people that we brought with us from the United States. His first time here in Uganda, Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve. And Pastor Daryl, stand up. Pastor Daryl, you He was here just a few short weeks ago in December with me as we helped lead some leaders to freedom. Amen. Please take a seat. I'm here to give you an encouraging word that God is still in charge. Amina. Amina. He is still doing miracles. And he chooses to use you. A few years ago, I went to Israel with my pastor. And I learned some principles how God uses us to do, perform miracles. I had the opportunity to minister on the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is nothing in size compared to your beautiful Lake Victoria. It's real small. But a lot of things happened there. 18 of the 33 miracles God did around that sea. It is a freshwater lake that is the lowest in elevation in the country. It's actually the lowest freshwater lake in the world. And God chose to use a majority of them, that place to perform miracles. Before I was ministering at the Sea of Galilee, the guy that we were with, she told me to tell everybody on our team, try not to walk on water. And I said, does that really happen? And she said it happens all the time. Because this is a special place. God, God chose the lowest place 
to perform the greatest miracles. So I, I'm here to encourage you. It doesn't matter where you are at. Of how low you feel. You're in a great place for God to do miracles. Amina. Now remember, miracles are things that we cannot do on our own. It's not by our strength, but for His strength. And not for our glory, but His glory. Do you remember Peter, one of the apostles? He fished all night long and didn't catch any fish. But then Jesus showed up. And I believe Jesus is about to show up in some of your lives. Be because as he's fished all night, As he fished all night, he caught zero fish. But then one word from our God. He's been to that same place before. But God just spoke it. Cast your nets on the other side. And so he probably thought like a lot of us, are thinking. I've done that before. And I've got no results. God's timing is perfect. I, I don't care how many times you have prayed for God to come through. Keep praying. You may be the on the edge of your miracle. And so Peter cast his net. He said that the, the scriptures say that there are so many fish that the nets were breaking. It wasn't a small miracle. It was a, something massive. Something he wasn't expecting. How many of y'all want that kind of miracle in your life? Amina? Amina. Why not you? Why can't you do miracles? The same Holy Spirit that was in Peter is in you. I'm going to read a scripture to you this morning. That Je when Jesus was ascending up to heaven, he made a comment. He said, you will be able to do things greater than I was able to do because I am going to my Father and leaving my Holy Spirit for you by His power but we have to believe in it. I believe there's a strategy the scripture shows us. That we have to be committed to the things of the Lord. We have to be persistent. Not stop. I believe too many of us are one step from God's glory and the, and the enemy surrounds us. Today I want you to walk through those chains. Because the same thing that we're dealing with, they dealt with in the scriptures. Because we're going to read some of the greatest miracles and revivals in the book of Acts. Before we saw those things, there was great struggle. There was great struggle. Let's pray.
Father, this thank you for this morning. I pray that every word of, out of my mouth will glorify you. Father, open the hearts of your sons and daughters to, to see you differently after this morning. Father, show them the power that you have today is the same power you had in the scriptures. And all of his sons and daughters, we all said, Amen. 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 I, I was telling first service, I was reminded as we saw these men up here that were free. I believe in times and seasons. I believe it was my first trip to Uganda many years ago. I was ministering here. And I had a ring on my hand that they gave me because I was the lead of this return program at one point. And that ring said freedom on it. Not knowing what was to happen years later. Not knowing that your pastor would be freezing in Washington State. But what he spoke to me years ago is that Pastor Robert was going to bring this nation in freedom. And, and so when we were worshiping first service, the father reminded me of me giving you that ring. And I believe he's declaring this is a new season. This is a seed that was sown many years ago. That we had no idea in our own minds how we're going to get to this place. But God did. I don't, God doesn't care how you got to this place this morning. You're not here by accident. There is nothing in, by accident in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word. I'm going to start with reading out of the book of Acts. My title for today's message is In the Shadow. We have, I'm going to read to you a story about some apostles. I'm going to read about some men in the Bible, the apostles. These were leaders like you and I. But they learned some things that we have to learn. They had to fill themselves with the Spirit. But I believe they understood that God liked, God knew their past. And he, they, God put them in un, bad conditions to perform his greatest miracles. Let's read Acts chapter 5, 12 through 16. Many signs and wonders were being done among the people through the hands of the apostles. They were all gathered around Solomon's colonnade or porch. No one else dared to join them. But people spoke highly of them. But people spoke highly of them, good of them. See, you have to remember this place in the scriptures, there's some things that just happen in the, in the scriptures. Acts chapter 5, 
God was establishing the first generation church. A lot of things had to change. He was, he was changing a nation. And he had to shake it up. Some of you may be in a place where you fear your life is being shaken. He knows. These leaders, as we'll continue to read, people were afraid to join them because of persecution. Because in these days, they were throwing these apostles into prison. They were losing everything that they knew was normal. And so they didn't want to join them. But admired what they were doing. Let us not be ones that admire. Let us join the leaders. Even with the people's hesitation. Let's read chapter, I mean, uh, verse 14. Nevertheless, believers were added increasingly in numbers. In multitudes, both men and women. They were carrying out the Great Commission, which is still what we are called to do today. Doesn't matter how you were raised, what village you came from, as soon as you ask Jesus into your heart, you were to call and to follow the Great Commission. Which, to, which is to draw people to Christ. As a result, people brought their sick to the streets. People brought their sick to the streets. Laid them on beds and mats. So at least Peter's shadow would fall upon them. And they were healed. Just the shadow of, P of Peter. Remember, Peter was just a man. But God used, used him. Did many miracles. The foundation of the church God used him to build. It says as they passed by, people were healed. Verse 16 says, crowds were gathered from towns from Jerusalem bringing their sick tormented in their spirits and their minds. And it says they were all healed. Not just one or two. All of them. By his shadow. Do you remember what a shadow is? A shadow, if on stage here, the lights are behind me, but I'm casting a shadow. Even everything that Peter was dealing with. The scripture says that he was he would get frustrated at times. Just like you and I. What this shows me is that even for us, even for us. That when we walk by, people should sense something different about us. Even for me, when I first got saved, I didn't know. One day at church, but God. And so they'd ask me, what, what's different? 
And I said, I went to this place. And I heard worship music for the first time. And something broke in me. It wasn't by my words. It was about who I reflected. Reflect Christ. That's what we see in the scriptures. This place, or this porch that is talking about in the scripture, Solomon's Colonnade. It's important to understand what happened in this place. In the scriptures in John chapter 10, it said Jesus taught and debated with the Jews in that same location. The apostles gathered there for, for the first time. I believe that this is also the spot that we read in Acts chapter 2 where the revival started. This porch had Columns of that were 37 foot tall of solid marble. It was a beautiful place. But it was on the outside of the temple. And with the scriptures we'll read in a little bit. The people in the temple were getting furious because no miracle should take place outside of the temple. God was trying to get his word out of the temples. He wanted the political figures to see a new way. This is a new generation. The process of you you. Getting people saved may change. We use social media and the internet that wasn't here 20, 30 years ago. But when COVID hit, the word of God was being spread around the world. What the, what the enemy set up to destroy our children, God used to proclaim his word. There are goodness and grace in the shadow. The temple wasn't happy with what they saw was going on. But God didn't stop. In Acts chapter 5, 14, I'm going to read it again because it's important. Nevertheless, it doesn't matter what the world looks like. What we're called to do has never changed and will never change. To bring believers to the feet of Christ. What the scripture doesn't say. It doesn't say everything is going to be perfect. It doesn't say everything is going to work out the way you think it should work out. But God's plans are perfect. The apostles struggled at times just like you have struggled. But God. God didn't say that people wouldn't get frustrated and yell at you. I just read an article actually while we were here in Uganda. I read I read an article online. That article said the place that I come from in the United States. 
has the least amount of believers in Christ than any major city in the United States. I sent that article to a friend of mine that's a pastor in Texas. And he said, that's crazy, I'm so sorry. And I responded, I said, no, I got a lot of work to do. It's a time to ignite a fire in Seattle. To bring what you have in worship. So the kids in the streets. So the homeless that we have. Will all receive his glory. And some may say, well, that's going to be a miracle. That's what we need. God uses us to perform miracles. The world doesn't have an answer for homelessness. But my God does. So my prayers are, Father, give me the answers. And give us the open doors to speak those things. Our cities have issues just like yours. But I believe he's calling us, his sons and daughters, to be used like Peter was used to perform miracles. See, so, sometimes we forget that God sent his only son to this earth. He could have came to this earth in any form. But he came to us as a lonely baby. To, to encourage us that if a baby born in a manger of teenage parents what the word says is that we can do these things and more. We have to we have to move in the crazy areas and the areas that are risky. I am a first generation Christian. When the enemy comes to me and tries to disqualify me, I have to remind him whose I am. That, that God used my parents to get me here. But my, my earthly parents aren't going to get to me where God wants me to be. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where you came from. It matters how you win this race. God never said it was going to be easy. But his word says it will be worth it. Here's what this scripture does say. It says through some people, even some that were afraid, the multitude came. Are you willing to sign up for that? Despite of what your friends and family may say. Are you willing to be that person? So filled with host Holy Spirit. That when you walk by. People are healed. That's what I want. The, the script. Scripture says that we should have the overflowing of the Holy Spirit. The, the overflowing means we can't contain it. So what's going to happen? It's got to come out of us. And it's contagious. Let's spread the gospel. In John 16:33, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Not as the 
world defines it. But as God defines it. Hebrews 13.5 says God promised never to leave you or forsake you. Romans 8.28 God promises to use all things for his good. Now it doesn't say that all things that happen to us are good. But I believe some of the hardest things that happen to us and our greatest losses. God uses those things to refine us. To sharpen us. The scripture says that iron sharpens iron. He's refining us in the heat. You're going to reach people that I'll never reach. Pastor Robert needs you to activate the Holy Spirit inside of you to take the Spirit outside the four walls because then it spreads. We just saw in this world how one virus can shut down the world. I believe that the Holy Spirit can spread just like that virus for his glory. Instead of putting, putting masks on, maybe they'll carry the word of God in their hands as a Bible. Are we crazy enough to believe that, hey, you can't come into the store unless you have the word of God in you? I never walked in fear during COVID. Because I knew God had a bigger plan. I think we're learning some things. I lost some close friends during COVID. I lost them here on this earth. But I'll see them again. Just, just like a lot of you did. Let's spread the gospel. Because the saddest part for me is during COVID. During COVID. How many of his sons and daughters didn't hear the name of Jesus before they passed? Amen. Let's continue to read. I'm going to go back to Acts 5.15. In this scripture, it says they brought the sick to the streets. Peter had the boldness to walk down those streets filled with the sick people. I believe he walked by the Spirit, not by sight. I believe the one thing that stops God's people the most is because they're not willing to take a risk. Even, even for there's some teams that I brought, not this team, but other teams, that they won't go around the world to see what God's doing because of an airline flight. A 20 hour airline flight. You're not willing to suffer for 20 hours. To bring something back from Uganda. That will change your family's life. Now if it was a boda boda, I may understand. 20, 20 hours long time on a boda boda. Okay, let's read John 14. John 14, 12 through 14. 
I tell you the truth. This is the scripture I was just telling you about. I tell you the truth. That anyone that believes in me will also do works that I do. It says anyone. Not, not just ones that went to school. Not just the ones that were raised in church the whole life. It says anyone that believes in me will do works. And he will do even greater works than these. Greater works than those? Than what we see in the scriptures? Because the, what God's calling you to do to heal the sick, to perform miracles for his glory, may have never been done before. This is our, this is our encouragement. Because I am going to my Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that my Father will be glorified in the Son. Remember, miracles aren't about us. We, when we look at the scriptures, we see the miracles being done. Always to glorify him. And it's usually at our lowest times. With people that the world has discounted. Look at King David. His own dad didn't believe in him enough to bring him in the house. So when the prophet went down the line and looked at all, the, all of all of his sons. He had to ask a question. Because he knew God had called him to that place. He said, do you, do you have any more sons? And then he said, yeah, I got David. He, he wasn't even a thought to his own father. But God changed the world because of that. Son. That one boy, a worshiper of the true God, that, that had more courage than any army to pick up five smooth stones and swing them around and defeat God's enemy. And it's, it's, for most people don't realize he picked up five stones for a reason. Because Goliath had some brothers. So God said, listen, you're going to take David out. You may have to deal with some other business. And so David said, oh, I need how many? Oh, I got five. Boldness. Boldness, strength. How about you? Doesn't matter what anybody says about you, your promises are already there. This, the scripture in Jeremiah says that before you were formed in your mother's stomach, God met with you. He gave you all the gifts and anointing you'll ever need. Just like those five stones. I pick them up. Are you ready to use your gifts? Some of us just need to be shaken. It's your season. It's your time. The vision Father gave me years ago about this place. He confirmed to me this morning. 
that this is the season for freedom. The ring has been placed on the finger of authority. And it's not by accident that Father has called me here to talk about seasons of miracles. Because your pastor years ago was called for this time to walk you into freedom so you can free men and women. We don't have to have anything figured out except our faith in him. We do not have to be perfect. The scripture says that we all fall short of the glory of God. So don't disqualify yourself. There's too many people behind us, especially in my own life, Especially in my own life. That will say, you, you shouldn't be ministering the word of God. You've been in jail twice. And I was like, no, that's what qualifies me. Because I've been in a place. But now I'm not. So the scripture says that there are weapons formed against us. So, so we live in a place that these weapons will hurt us at times. But remember what I said, we can't stop. Because the word of God says the weapons formed against you will not prosper. That they may hit you, but by the armor of God and the word of his truth, you sit there and say, yeah, that, that ain't nothing. You keep moving. I believe God takes broken people to mend them up. So they can be, be used for his glory. Amen. Amen. Jesus yes. is in the shadow with us. In John 10, 29, 28 and 29, I will give them eternal life. And you will never perish. Not one of you will be snatched out of his hands. My father has never left you or forsaken you. But this scripture says, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. That no one will be snatched out of my father's hand. And, and these words, these words are for us. Because the, there's no one that can wrestle with our God. That's, that's not even a contest. But it gives us a visual that nothing, not one of us, can be lost. It shows us his compassion for you. That as much as you struggle to get away from him, the enemy will not win. Amen. Amina. Deuteronomy 31 31.8. The Lord himself goes before you and, be, and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Fear can stop us from doing God's will. There's not one of us who haven't felt that in some form. And not felt discouraged at some times. But the scripture shows that he's with you in the fire. Psalms 18 6. 
Mukaga. The Lord is, is for me. The Lord is for me. Nti mukama alikulu iruange. I will not be afraid. Sija kutia chintu chona. Think about that. If God's for you and he's on your side, why are we afraid? Do we doubt that he is for us? See, some of us just need to be, not just read the words, but get the words in our hearts. This verse goes on. He says, what can a mere man do to me. Think about that. It doesn't matter what anybody else says about you. It only matters what he has already spoken over you. Opposition produces opportunity for you. To do miracles. So when you're in a battle, when you're in a fight, and you're at the lowest places, start looking for the miracle. Start calling out to your father. Let's see what Peter does here in the scriptures. Acts 5.17 then the high priest rose up. He and all that was with him. Along with the party of the Sadducees. They were filled with jealousy. Because they just saw what they were doing outside and not in the temple. So they arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail. And for those who don't know, this is the second time they told him not to preach the word. They gave him a warning the first time. But it didn't matter what man said. They, they had a passion to spread the word of God. And so they were arrested, thrown in public jail. But God. In verse 19 it says, But the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail cell during the night. And brought them out and said, This is our charge. Go stand in the temple. Tell the people all about this life. A life of a fisherman? No, a life of a believer. The angel didn't say, sit back, take an act. I know you've been in prison. He gave, the angel gave him a charge, a commission. Brought from the heavenly father. Saying, this is the time. And so when they heard this in verse 21, it says they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. They didn't wait for a week at daybreak. See, I believe the mercies were new that day that when the apostles stood there in the temple, the enemy was shaken in its feet because truth was being spoken for the first time. And our words bring life. His words have power. Use that power. But when the high priests and those Arrived at the temple, 
They convened the Sahedrin, a full council. And they were sent to the jail to have the prisoners brought to them. But when the servants got there, they didn't find them in the jail. Matter of fact, they had to report back and say, we got to the jail. The jail was still locked. And the guards that we put next to the door were, were still there. But they still got out. One principle we learn from this is no matter how big your problem is today, and how thick those prison walls or dark that you feel. God has the key to unlock every door. If it was true for Peter, it's true for you. The word of God stands true today as it did back then. You have to believe it though in your heart. That God has the key. Maybe some of you just need to reach out to him for the first time in a long time. And believe that God has the ability to bring us through our life's problems. God has a power to heal our sickness. To heal your marriages. To break the curses that are spoken over your life. If it's the same with Gideon, is it the same with us? Well, not, nothing good can come out of that village. But God. What's our excuse? This passage teaches that God has the power and is willing we know that he is able to. We can read the Old Testament and the New Testament. And read of the God of yesterday. And read of the God of in the Bible. But we forget he is the God of today. That he, that he is the Alpha and Omega. He is not in our time. The same God that did that miracle. As a blink of an eye, he's ready to do miracles for you. We just have to believe it. See, in 2 Kings, we, we hear a story. When Elijah was surrounded, his tent was surrounded by the enemy. But Elijah was at peace. He wasn't worried. He wasn't discouraged. He wasn't fearful. But his servant was. And we can read in the scripture, his servant said, Elijah, we're going to be killed. But then we see Elijah's prayer. Elijah's prayer was, Father, show my servant what I see. And so it says, Elijah's servant opened up the tent. I can imagine how scared he was. But then God gave him a vision. Of chariots on fire. Of the angels surrounding and protecting him. I pray that we can understand that kind of strength that we have. That when then when we look outside our doors, we see the angels there. Going, I got you. Let's start doing his business. Closing, I'm going to give my last point. 
God never opens prison doors. He always does it for a greater purpose. We cannot forget our purpose. You have a purpose in this plan. You created on this earth for a reason, not by accident. If God has done, freed you from things, start shedding the word. My testimony of being in jail, drugs, and women. It's not to give the enemy glory. But to give God the glory that he pulled me through these things. So, so I can reach into those worlds where men are addicted to drugs and pull them out because I walk through it. Those who have been in prison, those who have been in prison, I can say, yeah, I was there too. But God. What what is what's our excuse? Uh, I mean, listen, we we come here not to pour out, but to receive from you. You, you have things that our country needs. I'm going to challenge you to pray for miracles where I live. Because our our country needs to believe in Christ like you do. Now, I know your country is not perfect. But your worship here is genuine. A lot of your leaders are godly. This is our season this time. The jail is empty. The doors are unlocked. You have to know your purpose. They knew their calling. How about you? Our mission is the same. To make disciples of all men and women. Use the tool that Father has given you. And let today be the start. And take somebody with you. Teach them the word of God. I'd love to see the children in here. I believe this generation is going to be more powerful than before. I, I believe they're going to tread on the enemy's head like no other generation. But they're not going to be able to do it without us. The scripture says, train up a child in the way they should. He wants them to go. Let's help change the world. Let's perform miracles for his glory. As I close, I want, I want to pray for you. If you feel like you're in, you're in a jail now, that you feel darkness all around you, there is freedom. If there is sickness in your body, there is freedom. What is your jail cell? It's time for freedom. So I want, I'm asking everybody just to bow their head and close their eyes. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Not for me. But for the Father to see you. Because I believe it takes us to do something. To activate. His faith inside of us. Father I ask you to look down upon 
your sons and daughters. Father, with their hands raised high. Father, they are in a dark place. Either in depression. In fear. Some type of bondage, Father. In sickness. Father, as your word commands that by the stripes of your son's back, we are healed. Father, we just proclaim healing in this house. Father, we pray that blind eyes are open to see you like never before. Father, for those who don't understand their purpose, Father, give him a vision and a dream of how powerful you've made them. Show them that they can walk through that jail cell. That the doors are open. That no wall, no locked door, Father, will stop your sons and daughters. Father, give us the boldness to do things we've never done before. So you can use us to things that we've never done. All for your glory. Use us as your hands and feet. Use us to be your mouthpiece. To save the lost. Around the world. And we all said, Amen, Amen. Thank you again. Thank you again for allowing me to be here. Bishop. Can we all stand up? Man, how many people have been blessed by the word? Amen. You are free. Free Dembe. Amen. Amina. Now, how many people believe God is still in the business of doing miracles? The Bible says those uh, reading the scripture, those are um, disciples. The, 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 the prison was rocked. Locked up. The Lord brought them out. He can still do that for you today. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what kind of prison you are locked in today. The Lord can open a prison door for you to come out. I want to open up this altar here. If you need a miracle, God is a miracle worker. He still heals, he still sets men free, he still meets needs, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly. If you have any need, sickness, that is sitting in the house of God. Just walk to the front here. And we are going to pray over you. Amen. We're going to ask our pastors to come and join us. Amen. Today we've been blessed to have um, our senior pastors, Pastor Andrew Wesonga. Pastor Deo from Sekanyonyi Worship Center. Pastor Moses from Luero Worship Center. Amen. Can you pastors come and join us? And all of you guys that went through the um, the um, the Andrizo brother. Brothers, come and join us. Let's pray for these people. Raise your hands, people. Receive healing right now. Receive healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Those of you in the back who stayed, please stretch out your hand. Pray for our brothers and sisters. May the Lord touch your body. May the Lord open that prison door. 
May the Lord meet you at your point of need. May the Lord deliver you today. I come against every kind of sickness. Every infirmity. Every disease. Every pain. In the name of Jesus. For you, the word says. By his stripes. We were healed. And the word says. We will lay our hands on the sick. And the sick shall get well. I command every pain in your body. To leave your chest. To leave your stomach. To leave your hands. To leave your legs. I command your back to be healed. I command chest pain to go. I command uh, ulcers to go. I command eyes to be healed. I command joints to be healed. I command your blood to be transformed and healed. In the name of Jesus. Pray people pray. There is healing taking place right now. Some of you it is not even sickness. It is financial hardships. You don't know where to turn. You don't have a way out. The Lord is a, a way maker. He makes a way where there is no way. He calls those things which are not as if they are. God is a miracle worker. And God is a prison door opener. God is unlocking doors. He's opening doors for you. He's making a way where there is no way. Be healed. We come against witchcraft. We come against the powers of darkness. Every demonic force that has caused your pain in the name of Jesus. 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 Sister, be healed. My brother, be healed. Be set free. Anointing sets you free. The anointing sets you free. All the powers of darkness are losing you right now. People at the back pray. Whoever is at the back, please pray for these people. You are not going to die. You are going to live and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You will not die, but you will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The demonic is living. Witchcraft is living. We break every curse. We break every spell. Every demonic program that was released this mantle to destroy your destiny. In the name of Jesus, come out of her. Come out of the tomb. Be set free. You devil. Come out of that woman. Come out of that woman. Come out of her in Jesus' name. She was born to be free. She was born to be free. She was born to be free. She was born to for freedom. We speak the blood of Jesus over these sisters. We speak the blood of Jesus over our brothers and sisters. 
People at the back continue praying. God is delivering his people. They are those God is healing. They are not going to die. They are going to live and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for freedom. We thank you that you are setting your people free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. May the Lord set you free. Father, we thank you for the words that have been spoken here. Thank you for every word to remind us that every promise spoken to us we entered into the time of fulfillment. Thank you for the word we entered into a season of freedom. We declare this as an altar of freedom. We declare this as an altar of setting free. There shall be none that shall be held in bondage as they enter into this place. Let there be full healing. Let there be full deliverance for all your people. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that this is an altar of freedom. Come on, church, just make a declaration before God. Dedicate this campus and these grounds Dedicate the campus and the grounds as an altar of freedom, as a place of healing. That there shall no more be anyone that is bound that will step on this ground. That we remain in their bondage. Let there be freedom. Let there be healing. Let there be restoration. Let there be uplifting. Because your word is here. And amen. You have, you have said that it's an altar of freedom. This is a season of freedom. We speak it upon us, upon this congregation, upon the people you'll bring to us, that no one that you'll give to us will remain in bondage. But your name and your name alone be glorified. But it accomplishes whatever he has sent it out to do. It's a season of freedom, no one lives in bondage. No one. Even if they stumbled into this place by accident, it doesn't matter their intention. No one will leave this place in bondage. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. That's what makes the distinction between the God of truth and the word of God is true. It doesn't matter how they came in here. As long as they step into the sanctuary, they will live free and totally free. Totally free. Totally free. Totally free. Totally free. Totally free. Come on, keep on declaring that freedom. 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 I am hearing things here that I cannot even mention on the microphone. But keep on declaring freedom. Freedom for your community. Freedom for the land. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Rosala bara shekene masera kaya. Father, we enter into the dimension of freedom. We welcome the operation of your work of freedom. In our midst, we welcome the manifestation of your freedom. No one that you 